Good morning, Hickory Flat. I am so excited to be with you this morning in worship. I've heard so many wonderful things about you that I couldn't wait to join you. The problem is, is that I'm really not joining you. You're in your kitchen or your living room. Maybe you're out on your back deck. I'm here in Peachtree City, Georgia, out on my back deck today. It still seems a bit surreal that we can't join together and worship together and do some of the things that we normally would do. And it seems sort of like it just happened yesterday, although I know it has been a lot longer. These trees behind me when we first started were mostly bare. You could see the house that is behind ours. In between our two houses, there is a, a good bit of, of land and enough that there's a small creek when it rains a lot that will run in between our houses. I have three children, John, Shane, and Dory. The two oldest are typically away at college, but they're home back with us. And when those boys were young, they would go back out there after it rained and play in the creek and do all sorts of fun and excited, creative things. There was one day when it had rained a lot and they were out there a lot and uh, I really enjoyed watching them. They came inside, they were playing with some things, and I remember giving my middle son, Shane, the five minute warning. Parents know about this, it's five minutes before we have to go somewhere because you know there's gonna be a tantrum because they're gonna stop playing with their toys or they have to get their shoes on or whatever the tantrum of the day is. So I said, Shane, in five minutes, we've gotta get our shoes on, get in the car and go to wherever we had to go. So I go upstairs to do mom things and finish getting ready. I come back down and Shane's not there. I turned to his brother, John, I said, where is Shane? He goes, I don't know. So I start calling his name and calling his name and he's not answering. I start to get mad because this is not funny. And I call his name again, he's not answering. So I go outside and I go down by the creek and I start to get nervous. Is he out there? I'm either gonna be mad or worried. So I go out there and I call his name. I don't see him. I call his name in the front yard and the backyard. He doesn't hear me. So I go back in and I go into the garage and I call his name and I don't hear anything, but I look at the car and the door of the car is just a little bit ajar. And I go over and I look in. He had gotten into the car, gotten his shoes on. He was all ready to go. He had sat down in his booster seat and buckled himself in and had fallen asleep. So no matter how often I had called him, he wasn't gonna hear because he was in the car. He had done exactly what I had told him to do. And I love that memory because of that. Because so many times we think our kids aren't listening to us. And yet sometimes they really are. In our scripture today, there is one of my favorite verses of the Bible. It is John 10, 10. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. I don't know about you, when, when I think about abundant life, I think about the trees behind me and how when they are in bloom, they are spectacular. I think about the end of the book of the Bible. It, when in Revelation, it says there will be no more mourning and no more crying and no more weeping and God will wipe every tear from their eye. That's what I think of when I think of abundance, but that's not the full picture of what God says when he says, that they might have life and have it in abundance. There's so much beautiful Im imagery in this chapter of John. There are three things that I wanna lift up to you. First of all, it talks about the voice of the shepherd. And there are a lot of times when it talks about the voice of God throughout the Bible. And paired with that, oftentimes, is a door or a doorway or a threshold. And it talks about how there is this gate or the door to the sheepfold in this scripture. In the Old Testament, God tells people that they're supposed to put on their doorpost the words to the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And they're to put those on the doorpost. If you go to Israel today, all of the hotels, every single door in every single room of the hotel will have that scripture in a small scroll on the doorpost. 
There's also doors at the end of the Bible. Jesus stands at the door and knocks and waits for us. It's beautiful imagery. But one of the things I think that is most important from this scripture is this imagery of the shepherd. Shepherd life was not a, a sought after profession and job for people to do in ancient Israel. It was hard, there were harsh conditions. They had to do a lot of really physical work. They were dirty. They were outside all the time. And they had to protect their sheep because the sheep were very valuable to them. And so they would uh, tend to their sheep during the day, leading them to places where they could get places to graze. And then at night, they would put them in a sheepfold to protect them. They would put them in that sheepfold and then close the gate, but sometimes the gate would not work. And if the gate wouldn't work, the shepherd would lay in the area where the door was and protect those sheep from predators or, or any other types of things that might come their way. Caves were especially a, a sought after location for a sheepfold because there were so many things trying to come after those sheep, trying to steal those sheep from their shepherd. There are over 500 references to shepherds and sheep throughout the Bible. And in this particular chapter, it references Jesus as the great shepherd because of his all embracing care for those that he tends to. Sheep are not the smartest animals. They're considered helpless. And if we're gonna be honest about ourselves, we're not always smart and we can't do everything but we're valuable to God. Sheep were valuable to the ancient Israelites because they were a source of food, they were a source of clothing, and they were used as part of the, sh their hide was used as part of the shelter. Extremely valuable. You are valuable to God, and we may be helpless, but with our great shepherd, all things are possible. I don't know what you've been doing during your time of sheltering in place. You've probably gone through all of the emotions. I know I have. I've gone through anger. I've gone through grief and sadness and confusion. But there have been some great moments of joy. I know that when things get a little bit hectic in my house and I need to get out, I will go for a walk and I will pray. And when I pray, I hear God's voice. It may not be an audible voice, but there is this knowing that God is with me and that during this time of healing the world, when we are staying home in order for that to happen, my soul has been able to catch up with my body. We do so much as Americans in our society, we're constantly scheduling and on the go. And during this time when things have kind of shifted in the way that we manage our time, those walks with God have been so valuable to me. I hope that you take that time to emotionally and spiritually heal, to let God speak to you and stand in your doorway. You might be separate from me this morning and from the rest of your church family, but we're still united. We're united together because we're all listening to the Great Shepherd. We're all listening to his voice and trying to discern what is the next step in our world, for our church, and for us personally. And there's no place where we are more united than when we are around the table. You are preparing in your homes to partake of Holy Communion. And so are all of the homes in Peachtree City and around the world today. As we partake in this cup of blessing in this table of grace, know that God is with you, speaking to you, pouring his grace and his love into you. And that is abundant life. Would you pray with me? Wonderful God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for loving us, for speaking to us. May each and every single person who is listening to this today, feel your love, feel your grace, and hear your voice telling us 
who we are and whose we are and what we are called to do next. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen.